Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 5 of the Game Maker Studio Tutorials. My name is Reese, and yeah, let's get straight into this. So, in this video what I want to cover is basic uh, GUIs and menus using both clickable and hoverable buttons. Now, I have covered this topic before, but I want to recover the topic again because there's a few things I've learned about actually handling it a bit better and there's also another method that I've been introduced to that can actually be quite useful uh, if you don't want to use a mouse that is. So I'm going to be doing quite a bit of coding in this tutorial and I'm going to get straight into this but uh, as a summary before I actually get started on the code uh, I will go through my uh, my actual project. So the first thing I've done, I've created a new room inside the project. You'll be able to download this project, don't forget. Uh, I've created a new room in the project and it's called RM Menu. And this is just a, a typical room like the, the other two that was in the previous project, uh, 960 by 540. Uh, and in the creation code at the minute, uh, it actually creates an instance of OBJ button spawner. Now this is a new object I've created and this object, uh, bearing in mind, is not persistent. So when the room actually switches outside the main menu, uh, this will get destroyed, which is what we want it to do. Uh, I don't want this object to actually coexist throughout the entire game's lifespan, which is why uh, it's not actually a controller object, even though it is actually controlling some of the objects that are in the game. Uh, yeah, so... A basic rundown uh, what's actually happening here the the button object is actually the object that handles the one specific function when you click a button inside the main menu so you there's gonna be a play button a quit button options button uh, and it's really like yeah infinite depending on like, what your game's functionality is then there's the button spawner now this actually handles the destruction and the creation of all the button objects. The reason I've done it this way is because if you want to destroy a button object to respawn in a new menu, so say for example you go from a main menu onto an options menu, you want to destroy all them existing button instances on the main menu before you actually spawn in the option menu buttons. Now there's two ways of doing this, you could either just switch to another room or you could just stay in the same room. Now I think it's just better practice to stay in the same room because at the end of the day if you've got things happening in the background like a camera panning through your level uh, it's just gonna reset the camera and it's gonna look hideous so yeah that's the reason we're doing it this way it's pure because doing it in one room it can actually add a, a bit more functionality uh, in your main menu that is anyway let's get into this uh, that was the quick summary of what I'm doing gonna be doing here um, yeah, in the create event, uh, um, um, yeah, I've actually got this project up open up on my second monitor so I can like type all this out for you guys. It's going to be a lot of code, that's so. uh, Right, so the create event of the button instance, we actually want to define the button variables that are actually going to control what the function of this specific button is. Uh, I'm going to enlarge this as well so you can see it a bit better. And we will get on the go of it. So the first thing we majorly want is a button type and I'm gonna do that in capitals uh, with an underscore so it's like a very important variable uh, and it's also gonna need a string and we're gonna just set that to uh, quotation quotation for a blank string essentially. Then it's gonna need a hover state and the hover state will basically be a boolean variable uh, true if the mouse is in like inside the like the button object and false if it's not uh, But it will also be toggled if we select it using the keypad up and down uh, Yeah, so and then we want width Is let's just yeah, this is gonna be the width of the button so and this is gonna be multiplied by two bearing in mind so I'm going to say 80 pixels, that's going to make the width of the button uh, 160 and then we want a height of 20, so that's going to be 40 pixels in height. 
and then we want a hover value and set that to zero to begin with and then we also want hover color uh, you, it doesn't really matter if you use U or O-U-R or just O-R uh, game makers friendly with that sort of thing uh, so it's a British program but I know convention most people use just color with the American spelling so I'll do the American spelling uh, then we just want uh, C underscore white. Now I'm just using the the constant colors as well. If you really wanted to get like customizing into your own like sort of game, you could use a dollar symbol and then like F F F F F F. Uh, that is the hex code for white. And also one other thing to take note of is the hex code. Typically it's in RGB, but uh, so your red, green, blue channel, but in actual Game Maker, it's a uh, BGR. <laughs> I've got no idea why that is, um, and I really think they do need to change that convention, but um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, the next thing we're going to need to do is call an alarm. Now, just do alarm 0 equals 1. <laughs> now, I know we're using delta time in here in these tutorials, but there's one thing to point out. If the alarm is not being used uh, as a measure of time in the game, you can actually use them. So all we're actually wanting to do here is call another like bunch of events, but just delay them by one step. So that's actually where an alarm can be useful when you're using delta timing. Um, I will get into what that alarm is for later, but. Uh, I'm just gonna call it a change button string. Like so. Uh, yeah, and that's the create event. So, going into the step event, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to be writing a lot of code here. So, the first thing we're gonna do, actually, is check if the mouse is hovering inside the button. So, we're gonna do if open bracket point underscore in underscore rectangle and then we're going to do mouse x comma mouse y comma uh, x minus width the variable we just defined uh, and then x oh uh, sorry no y minus width so it's, it's x1 y1 uh, x2 y2 yeah then we want x plus width and then y plus width like so. And I believe that is it. So that's going to return either true or false depending on if mouse x mouse y is inside the rectangle collision box. I found this function to work a bit better uh, than just like, yeah, collision rectangle or um, there is some other functions you can use, but um, it keeps it simple, this function. So. Yeah, then when we actually go inside the, the button, we actually want to set that hover value to equal 1. So it's now been toggled. And hover color. Uh, and for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use um, C underscore olive. Like so. And then, yeah, I'm not going to do that for the time being. But uh, yeah, then we actually want to check if mouse check button uh, mb left uh, bearing in mind you could also use your own key binding for that if you really wanted to but for purposes of this tutorial and speed I'm going to make it a bit quicker uh, and then yeah then we want to set hover to equal 2 and hover color to equal c underscore lime so what is that doing Essentially, uh, if we, to, well, to begin with, the button is going to be Y, and then if we hover inside of it, we actually also need a bracket there, if we hover inside of it, that's basically going to set the button to olive uh, in color, so it's going to be hovered over then. Then if we check the button, uh, MB left, while it's inside that rectangle, uh, we're basically clicking on the button, and we're then changing the color again to lime, uh, to see if it's been pressed. Now, we actually need to uh, revert the settings as well. So, 
here under reset hover value of mouse left, we're going to do else open bracket and then uh, hover equals zero and then hover color equals c underscore white, like so. So that is the basis of the button, what's actually going to be happening. Now, yeah, um, we could actually leave that there for the time being, um, but there is one more thing we need to do. Uh, I will actually add uh, the final function if it's pressed, so if hover equals 1. I think I'm pretty sure you could just do if hover, but I'm actually using variables in the in the check, so I don't want to uh, screw it up. That's all. I tend to use just if hover if it's like a boolean, but we're actually using variables in this. So uh, yeah, and then we actually want to do if mouse check button released, uh, and then going back to the other tutorial. Uh, Actually, yeah, we'll just do MB left for that matter. That'll be a bit more easy to handle. Uh, and then, yeah, then we actually want to do a switch. So, and then this switch is going to be handling the button type variable. And then that's going to lead to a case statement. And what this bit of code here is actually doing, this is the code execution for when you actually click in the button. Uh, this is actually have all it's doing is having like handling the hover uh, and changing the color if we do so. Uh, that's why we're using mouse check button here. But uh, we only want this to execute once, so we're using mouse check button release. Um, and then once we've determined that hover is one, so the mouse is actually inside the rectangle. Uh, and we basically pressed a button and released it. It's then going to go over to the switch statement and execute a certain function inside the game depending on what we're going to do. So the button function, uh, yeah, I'm using 0 for default, that doesn't have anything, 1 for play, 2 for options, 3 for quit, and 4 for the options menu back to the main menu. So yeah, what we can do, uh, I'll actually just top it that bit of code so I've got a bit of reference and paste it there and then we just want to do case 0 uh, and then break I'm pretty sure we, don't, we could even leave that for that matter uh, and then case 1 uh, and then we actually want to play the game so at the minute we're in the um, the main menu but we want to go to the game room so room go to rm game and close that off and then break and then we want to do an options menu so case 2 uh, break I'm not going to do the options menu for the time being because I've still got to set a few things up in the button spawner object but uh yeah i'll actually um put them there as well like that that's a bit easier to understand then uh case three and then break so three is gonna quit the game and put that there and then we want to do game underscore end Obviously, if you have like certain things that are happening in your game, like you need to erase DS lists or like remove things from memory, you'd send it to like a script or something, and then use the script to close the game. But uh, and then the options back to the main. So I'm not going to do that as well for the time being. So we don't really need it. Uh, case four and break like so. And then we could also just do default. So that's if the um, the button doesn't have any of those values that were specified. So in this case, it'd be zero if we haven't assigned one. Uh, and all we need to do is just break like that. So that's handling the execution of when you click the button now. And yeah, I think that's good. So going over to the, uh, we don't need to do the alarm event yet. 
uh, the draw event. So, uh, the draw event is really rather simple, um, but yeah, it is quite hefty with the code. So, first thing we're going to need is this hover color, and I'll set that to CY actually, just for uh, conformity. And yeah, we actually want to set that color of a box now. So, um, draw set color. And then we want to do hover color. So typically in a draw event, you want to avoid using if statements. And the reason we're assigning that value color to a variable is because we can just change the variable on the fly. And then we don't have to check if the hover state equals a certain value and then change the color that way. Um, yeah, it makes it a bit simpler. Um, keeps the code a bit cleaner as well. So, and then we want to draw the button object itself. So, draw rectangle. You could also use sprites, but I'm just using draw rectangle for this. Uh, x minus width, and then x. Oh, sorry, no, y minus height, and then x plus width, and y plus height like so and then we want to just just want to do uh, false because it has an outline function draw rectangle uh, and then the draw settings so we actually want to draw text onto the button now but we need to configure a few things before we actually do that so draw uh, set color so this is going to be the color of the text and then we're just going to do c underscore black and then we also want to do the H align and the V align of the uh, text itself. So uh, draw set H align F A center. Draw set V align F A middle. I always get them too confused. <laughs> uh, trying my best to remember that. Uh, yeah, we can just copy them in the bottom as well. So, but the color in this instance is going to be minus one. That's going to be FA top, and then, yeah, we also need to end them. <laughs> and that's going to be FA, oh, sorry, no. That's actually FA left, yeah, and then that is FA right, no, top, there we go. So what that's doing, that's reverting them draw settings that were called here back to the original values so we don't screw up anything else in the game. Um, and then finally we just need to draw the text, so draw text. Obviously you need to also have a font in the game if you wanted your own custom font, but for the purposes of this I'm keeping it a bit um, smaller in size. So And then we just want to do string, yeah. So. So the string value will actually contain uh, a string and it's going to be relative to that one specific object instance. So yeah, this value is actually going to change depending on what the button type is. Now that's where the alarm comes in. Um, so in the alarm, uh, when we create these button objects, we're basically going to manually set this button type value in creation code. And setting it like that will basically mean that we can predefine all the other functions of a button based off of this value. That's why we're setting this alarm here. Uh, we actually want to do, uh, it, well, going to the step event even, we can copy this switch statement here. And then if we go back into the alarm, like so, we can actually just do switch button type here, paste that there. And then instead of actually having. Um, yeah, Ruben go to RM game. We're not actually doing that here. Uh, yeah, and we're also going to do. Oh, in fact, no, we don't need case sort no. Um, yeah, we just want to set that string value. So string equals uh play in the function one, and yeah, in the options, we just want to do string equals options. So this is basically the text that's going to be drawn onto the button for that specific button instance. Uh, then we want quit. And then for four, we want back. Because that's going back from the options menu to the main menu. 
and then for this we're just going to set string to blank in the default and I believe that is it so yeah we could actually um, test this in game now all we need to do is go into the button spawner object and create the instances so yeah into the button spawner object and um, we've got these custom events we don't need these for the time being um but uh, i'm just trying to think now bear with me a second uh yeah so this object has been created actually when the room is created and all we need to do now is create the buttons inside this object when the room starts so uh, we can do hover value actually we're gonna need these actually in a minute so hover value equals naught and then keyboard toggle equals box like so um, we're not using those for the time being, but we'll need them later. Um, but yeah, we actually want to create the button instances. So there, button play equals instance create depth. And then room underscore width over two. We're just going to define a standard center position. Room underscore height over two. Uh, obviously if you're using cameras in the game you'd have a specific value for those coordinates but and then the depth for negative 4096 and obj button like so now we actually want to set that play button uh, to be actually having a function of a play so at the moment it's just the default button and we actually want to change that but because I've referenced this as a variable we can actually change the variables on the fly that are contained in that one specific instance we've just created so if we do button play dot uh, button type equals one so that's a play button bearing in mind and then uh, we're not going to be using this value for the time being, but I'm going to put it in anyway just to speed up the process a bit. Uh, hover value. And set that to 1. Um, so the button type, obviously, that's being set in the object now, and that's a play instance. So, uh, yeah, it should feel good. And if we really wanted to, we can just copy and paste this code. Uh, I'll put it down here. So this is going to be a quit button now. So we actually want to do button quit. And going back into the other instance, bearing in mind, the quit button is free. So yeah, button type is equal to free, and we also want to offset this. So uh, let's just do plus one twenty in the height. And then that should be good. And also set hover value to 3 as well. Now, I believe if we run this, it should work. No promises though. <laughs> so it's a lot of code to write all in one go. Uh, but yeah, we've got we're playing the quit button now. And yeah, if I hover over it, um, yeah, it changes its color. And also the quit button works. The, uh, the collision seems to be a bit offset though, um, not sure why that is, uh, but yeah if we hit that quit button, changes its colour and notice it ends the game, so uh, yeah let's fix that collision, um, ah yeah that's the error, we're doing y plus width, we actually want that to be y plus height, sorry about that. <laughs> that put it there one minus height that's what we want and yeah let's just quickly test that again so we've got this play button and this quit button and yeah the collision is working perfectly now so notice if I uh, press and hold this button it changes it to green that's because it's basically put it into a clip state 
But the minute I move out of the button radius, it resets the color. That's because we've left the collision box. Uh, and that's the way typical games do it. Like, if you press and hold a button, it won't do anything. It's only when you actually do the release event that it triggers the button function. And yeah, we're in the game now. So, yeah, uh, I will actually do an options menu in this tutorial. It's gonna actually be like quite an extended tutorial, this. Um, but uh, it isn't really that much extra work. Um, so, yeah, I'll actually go into details of what those uh, custom events do in the the spawner event now, so, or spawner object, should I say. Um, so, when we create these buttons at the create event of a room, uh, it's creating the buttons, um, but if we have an options button in here, so, just let's copy this, and if we go back to that other option, uh, other tab, sorry, um, yeah, two is an options button, so, we actually want to set that button value to 2 and the hover value to 2 and also uh, set this to room height divided by 2 plus 60 uh, I'm going to put that in brackets as well I'm pretty sure uh, hang on a second yeah division comes before addition so but makes it a bit simpler to understand so now we should have an options button as well, and we do. So yeah, we've got the play button, options button, and if we click this button, at the moment it doesn't do anything. But if we go back into that options button event, what we're actually going to do in here, we're going to do, uh, well, we're going to reference the button spawner object, and we're going to fire an event inside that instead. So yeah, we're going to do with obj button spawner so that's going to reference the only instance of button spawner so there's only one uh, and event underscore user open bracket zero so that's going to trigger a custom event which is going to handle the options menu and again we're going to copy that and we're going to put it into four now Case 4 is going to be going back into the main menu, so we want to use a different event for that. So we're going to use event user 1, and yeah, you can have up to 16 events with these custom events, but um, it's quite a simple way of doing it, but um, there probably would be other methods, it's like say if you had a, a value inside the object and you'd had to uh, check it in the step event. The reason I'm doing it this method is because it's only running the event once and subsequently because of that if you only run the event once it's going to be much more optimized than doing it every single step when it's just unnecessary. Uh, yeah so going back into the button spawner uh, event user nor we actually want to go to the options menu so we basically just need to destroy all the re existing instances of the buttons which are from the main menu so we do with obj button open bracket uh, instance destroy like so so that's going to destroy all them initial button instances and then we want to create the new ones so uh, we're going to do there button underscore back uh, and that's going to equal, uh, we can actually just copy that from the create event and said that, wherever it is uh, did I really just put that in the step event? <laughs> I did not mean to do that, okay then uh, don't know why I put that in the step event for the smaller object, that should be in the create event sorry about that, yeah I put that in the, cre yeah the step event, it should actually be in the create event I've got no idea where I put it in the step event uh, yeah, so then we just want to copy that, and then we can go to event user nor. Uh, that's going to be button back now, and then we just want to rechange them variables, like so. Uh, they're correct, and yeah, make that number four now. Now the hover value for this, there's only going to be one button instance on this like well section of the menu, so we only need that as one. Um, 
I will explain what that does. Uh, probably in another tutorial. Um, I'll do a part A and a part B to this because it's uh, getting rather long now. Um, but yeah, I believe that should work now. So that's event user one. So that's going to create the new uh, back button in the options menu. Then in the user event one, then we need to copy that again. Uh, but we actually just want to respawn the main menu instead of actually having an options menu again. So we just take the create event code, copy and paste it back in there, and then jobs are gooded. So if we run this game again, and yeah, let's test it out. So uh, yeah, hover over it, and every single one's working fine. Hit the play button, and yeah, it takes us into the game, run it again. And then if we hit the options menu, destroys all the main menu instances and spawns on the back button. Hit the back button, destroys that, puts them back on the main menu again. And obviously hit quit, closes the game. So, yeah guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I've decided what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to split this video into a part A and a part B because... Um, I also want to do keyboard toggling as well, so when you actually hit the up or the down key on the keyboard, it will change the hover selection of a specific button. That comes in handy if you're using a controller for your game and you can't actually use a mouse cursor to determine the collision point of your button. Uh, that's essentially what we're using the hover value for, but I'll get more into that in the next video. In the meantime though, I hope you've enjoyed this video, as always please don't forget to leave a like on it if you found it informative, and subscribe if you're not already, and uh, yeah, adios, so I will be back soon with part B of this tutorial.